Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and this video, Let's Another Economy, was done in 1997 during my speaking tour of Britain by Robin Johansson from Farnsborough College. And uh, he attended one of my talks um, about banking and then followed me picketing the Bank of England and uh, did an interesting video, I believe, which is the only documentary about the rise of the let's green dollar alternative time bank currency movement in the UK in the 1990s when it was exploding. Exciting times. So this is it, the only video I know of, there may be more, but not of this length, 25 minutes, on how the let's movement came about in the UK. Short intro first. When I got to the UK and I stayed with Ken Palmerton, a uh, well-known SOCRED usury free activist. He belonged to the Liberal Democrat Party at that time. And he showed me this article called Helping People Help Themselves out of the Liberal Democrat News, November uh, 29th, 96. So that's the previous newsletter. So I'm gonna read it, take a minute, the good news, cause I'm here talking about let's, and this is what I read when I hit the country. Uh, one of the key problems facing us as party activists is how to implement our ideals. How do we put into practice our views on sustainable development? What's the best way to encourage people to become active citizens? How can we enable developed communities to help themselves in practical ways? Recent research reveals that one liberal democrat policy is starting to bear fruit. Local exchange trading systems, let's are a self-help initiative which seek to enable those on low incomes to become more actively involved in overcoming their situation in a sustainable manner. Let's are local associations whose members list their offers of and requests for goods and services in a directory and then exchange them priced in the local unit of currency favors in Calderdale, acorns in Totneys, and I believe it's six units to the British, uh, to the British pound in Totneys. As such, they have the potential to overcome the problem that there are many people with unmet needs and many others able and willing to work, but this supply and demand cannot be matched due to the shortage of money. They also have the potential to encourage the recycling and reuse of goods in communities. The Let's Movement has grown rapidly in the UK, from only 40 schemes in 92 to over 350 last year. Research at Leeds Metropolitan University has shown that there are now some 30,000 Let's members in the UK, trading the equivalent of some 2 million. The largest Let's in Manchester has nearly 700 people involved, trading over 90,000 worth of goods and services each year, an average of £131 per member. Although this might seem insignificant, for the Let's members surveyed, such trade was wildly, widely held as important to their living standards. And of course, their social standards too, because they're ending up meeting people. Uh, the Let's enabled them not only to get essential goods and services that they would otherwise have been unable to afford, getting gutters repaired or cookers mended, but had allowed them to meet a wider range of people that they could call upon for help and rebuild a sense of community in their localities. Although initially, Let's was seen to be something of a green, middle-class hobby, the recent research shows that this is no longer the case. As they've taken off, more and more people joining them are low-income and unemployed people who see them as a way of overcoming their poverty and strengthening their social networks. Further research currently underway into the role of LETS in promoting sustainability, also at Leeds Metropolitan University, is providing additional information on their ability to encourage a more environmentally friendly way of working. It is time then for all liberal Democrat local authorities to take seriously their role as enablers and start to enable people to help themselves. For information, contact Colin Williams at Leeds University. Nice, eh? Hmm. So, uh, I laid a, I believe, a one pound bet at 15 million to one on Lord Such. He's dead now, so I won't collect. Now, another story out of the same newsletter, Liberal Democrat Party, again. Can councils help tackle poverty? Wow. 
Liberal Democrat-led Stockport thinks it can and has launched an anti-poverty strategy, including a let's local currency scheme. Uh, Paul Porges reports. Liberal Democrat News 961129. Stockport's first let scheme is getting underway, assisted by a grant from Stockport's Liberal Democrat-led council anti-poverty budget. Let's, local exchange trading scheme, and you have to wonder how they didn't manage to make it work. That uh, scheme is a scheme by which local people on low incomes can have work done without spending money and then repay their debt by providing a service to someone else. Time trading. In other words, it's a barter scheme with time as the unit, which enables people to use their skills and creative talents for mutual benefit. To be successful, the scheme needs to be organized by committed volunteers within the community it serves. Also, it needs good control of the credits gained or traded in. No, it doesn't. Cashiers have no trouble running chips. Um, to assist in that, the council is providing money for a computer, which is to be used for the effect of control. Okay. As well as money for training of the volunteers running the scheme. Here's how poker chips work. Lesson one. <laughs> Uh, for four years ago, Liberal Democrats on Stockport Council, concerned about the link between poverty and ill health, and that nationally one in three children live in poverty, set up an anti-poverty strategy and allocated money in the council budget for anti-poverty work. Stockport covers some of the more deprived parts of Greater Manchester, as well as some of the wealthiest. When we embarked on the anti-poverty program, we wanted to know what the needs were in the various parts of town. We wanted to find out where people on low incomes were living, as not everyone living on council estates is in poverty, and many people on low incomes do not live on council estates. We therefore held a series of anti-poverty forums, open to the public, voluntary organizations, churches, as well as health authority and frontline council employees. Let schemes were the subject of one of the anti-poverty forums, where their advantages and difficulties were explored. A major issue with let schemes is that officials sometimes view the credits gained in monetary terms, even though there's no exchange of money. Support in participating in let schemes is in danger of having their benefit reduced. Ah, the threat, you know, don't do any trades on your own. But in the United States, if you cut the little old, you know, if you mow her lawn and she cuts your hair, IRS said not taxable. Same thing in Australia. So it's saving the government money, and those countries have decided that if you're bartering time and it's not your primary profession or income, then it doesn't count for taxation or off your check. The Heaton's Let Scheme is the first to be started with the initiative coming from residents of the area. Progress will be reviewed after six months, and if successful, a second Let Scheme will be supported. So again, I don't know why it didn't work. So here is the video made at that time with these stories all coming out with Let's Burgeoning in the UK about to offer poor people a solution and uh, the video that he made right at that time. First I can know of that's this long. Enjoy. Sorry about the band that slides across there. It's got to do with the camera. Okay, the only documentary on Let's in the UK that I'm aware of, the explosive growth in 1997, this was done.
years ago I got involved in a movement called the Rainbow Movement, um, which was primarily a, a political uh, movement dedicated to uh, change. Um, and a book came out at the same time um, called After the Crash, which was subtitled The Emergence of the Rainbow Economy. This caught my eye. Um, and I read it and in there was a chapter dedicated to elect systems and these seem like a very very good idea Since I became a member I spent about 1,000 beaks or more, more than 1,000 beaks Occasionally when you want something that it's difficult to find in you know, pages um, yet you turn to it and you're surprised at just what is offered, really. There was a time when I needed a service that I couldn't afford to pay for. And I was wondering how, how to do this without upsetting anybody. I suppose it changes your perception and that it makes you think more about how that kind of society can work, which isn't always based on whether or not you've got money. People who um, can see beyond the normal economic monetary system, I think it appeals to as well, and say, well, you know, barter is one thing, circular barter is something else, and I'm quite willing to try it out and see if it works for me. Let's is an alternative economy. It works much the same way as a checkbook and a directory, uh, like the Yellow Pages. Members join our scheme, they're given a checkbook, and they enter their names and services they offer into the directory and that gets distributed amongst the other members and trading takes place by exchanging checks and their accounts are uh, recorded on a simple computer program that works much the same as a bank would with an ordinary bank account. With no interest. We've got With no interest. Around 220 members of Cutlets, which is Kingston Apartheid's local exchange trading system. Once you're a member of our LET system, um, you can telephone anyone up for any goods or services. Um, of course, it doesn't have to be a direct barter because you'll be paying with the local currency. There will be 20 beaks for us, suppose. We use the currency beaks because we're based at the beacon in Kingston. Um, it's a local environmental centre and the LET system is housed at the Beacon. In other words, we have our computer here. Most of the early videos on Let's had these kind of little skits or portion of them explaining how this money is spent. <laughs> Gee, seems spent like regular money, doesn't it? <laughs> what it seems to me, yeah. mm -hmm. I've cut back the back of the, of the armhole a bit because mm -hmm. that was cutting, you remember that was cutting you into the armhole. Mm -hmm. you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Brilliant. How long did all that take, Pete? It took me about two hours in the end. It was, you know, that, it was quite easy. Mm. Wonderful. So, um, two hours, I, I would guess that works out about 15 beaks. Okay. Is that about right with you? Yep. Is that fine with you? Yeah. 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 That's fine. Okay, that's lovely. I'll write you off to check. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> because then we come to understand that they are creating their own money. There's no equivalent to the Bank of England. No one is printing money. Even more democratic than the baby system circle. The baby system circle, one person tends to cut up the complex packets to create the tokens, which are the currency. Well, now a lot of lads do that too, okay? In the case of lads, no one does that. No one decides how much money will be in circulation. Anyone? No, anyone can issue their own chips, so everybody decides. To pay somebody to do something for them, then do them so create their own money. That's right. It's um, uh, something that is a token 
that's a reward um, for work or labour in some in some way. But in itself, it doesn't have any value. It's just a token that sort of, um, says that some kind of transaction has taken place. Except for the gold bugs who think these receipts for labour should be based on yellow rock. Now, this is exactly the same thing that happened when the Irish banking system crashed and all the companies just simply kept paying all their guys with checks from their corporations, which the other guys didn't cash. They just stuck them in a box and they kept issuing their own checks to pay their bills and everybody accepted each other's checks and then finally a year later when the banks opened up again, they cleared them all and they had no trouble. Right? Decredited. A member who is spending may go negative at will. A positive goes to the one who made use of his skill. And though we use no money, we have found a way to trade. A giant Stephanie reform of money has been made. Money is the source of life. The first we got was our tea got. And then we got to have money. And which is got uh, not the level. We got to pass us back to Sebastian the whole. I like money you can eat. I think we just wanted to get the children to understand, or not so much to understand, but touch on a couple of key concepts. One of those concepts was the idea that money can be almost anything. It just depends um, how people lay value on something. But if somebody puts value on something, then it can operate as a medium of exchange. And you can show them a little bank of plastic poker chips, too. <laughs> I'll take it. This is among the, one of the oldest things that's money from thousands of years ago. That was money in the forest and in China. People do get a great deal currencies, I suppose, but I don't quite understand why they should do so. They're not uh, Mickey Mouse currencies. They are, in fact, practical currencies. They work within those local lets, so they, they function just the same way that formal money functions. But at the same time, as we were saying earlier on, they symbolise a whole range of very, very profound issues. That is to say, they symbolise the possibility of alternative value systems and practising those alternative value systems in a way which contributes to the making of a living. Nice, um, eh? uh, and which does so in an inclusive way uh, and which is not simply judged by the very narrow systems of valuation that are apparent in the foreign economy. It's 25 weeks a week to uh, hire a boat. Uh, when I go away in the summer to do various events and festivals, then the boat's free and uh, you can have it for 25 weeks or whatever. That's like a three-hour bill. And, uh, Cheaper than a motel for one night in Europe, you know. Worth one pound sterling or ten minutes work. Um, the reason we do this on our let system is to be, give people a guide for their worth. If they've never charged before, if they've done babysitting for free, or they've cleaned their friend's house as a favour, this is valuing their work, and they can spend their beaks on luxuries they otherwise couldn't afford. Money is essential. It's just Isn't that nice? Poor people can spend their beaks on luxuries they could never before afford. Keeps us going. And we all need it. Or we can't get enough of it. Britain's greatest treasure house, the Royal Mint. Everybody needs dough, and here's the dough before it's needed. The first and most important process to reduce the molded bars of metal to a proper size. And here the blanks being sent out. The first stage to looking like real coins. Talking about the 1% of physical tokens and not the 99% of computerized credit tokens. Gone wrong. So far, there's been no hint or tail to the whole story. But that's soon for trying. Money. <laughs> the main difference between let's and the conventional way of organizing money, they do lots of things similarly. 
But the main difference is that no interest. authority creates the money which is in oh, circulation too, and decides whether the interest rate's going to go up or not and how much is going to be circulated and all the rest. And with that power, they can force or buy other people to do certain things that they want to do. Whereas with let's, you actually have to get cooperation. But in let's, uh, the legitimacy of the currency is um, defined very much and sustained by the participants in the let's. And one of the, things, one of the difficulties, I think, for many participants in let's is that they think of the let's currency very much as a version of the formal currency, and yet in many ways it's just yeah. the opposite. Um, so to get it's the opposite, though, okay. that seems to me to be a good thing rather yeah. than a bad thing. And indeed, it's necessary for let's to have people in debt in order to increase the volume of economic activity going on. Well, that was the original wrong premises to think that you had to have a negative before you could have a positive. That's how most let's work. It starts with the first guy writing an IOU. But you could always open up a consignment store where everybody could bring the stuff they want to get rid of, put price tags on it, and then leave with those credits so everybody's in the positive, which makes it easier to spend. Tom Kennedy used to have a class of grade fives who ran their own lets. And he said it was very difficult to get the kids to go into the negative. Nobody wanted to go into the negative. Nobody wants to be in the negative. They'd all rather earn it first. And that's the beauty of a consignment store, because the store holding the goods is holding all the negatives, while everybody else now is holding positives. They don't feel so bad spending. It first of all probably takes a, a leap of faith because uh, they're not quite sure why they can start to trade on it without having any money or haven't having sometimes uh, used it themselves. In other words, who would lend us money interest-free? <laughs> who would take our chips? Stuff. I think the, the basic idea of let's is very simple. It is kind of inversion of the formal economy. That's a, a, a very nice and simple, uh, simple idea. The problem is it's so simple that, that people have difficulty getting their heads around it on occasion. They, they, they can't quite understand, for example, the idea that spending money is a good thing, uh, saving it is actually rather a bad thing. Well, actually, saving it isn't bad unless you're forced to have negatives for positives, right? Because if you've got a consignment store, everybody can save their junk at the consignment store, and what's bad about that? But if you're stuck with every positive's got to have a negative, then the guys who are saving are causing the pot not enough positives to be able to spend. And that's why they have a problem with that. So they must force the negatives not to save, and all they got to do is start a consignment store to hold the negatives, and that whole problem disappears. Interest in not receiving interest, so therefore um, storing money is of no benefit whatsoever. That's right, with no interest, storing money is of no benefit at all. But it doesn't mean you have to spend it. <laughs> you know, I mean, in a bank, you're rewarded for storing money. Um, and, and that reward isn't there with the letter system. No interest. Interest takes from the negatives to give to the positives, right? If you're positive with the bank, they give you interest. If you're negative, they take it away. So, to those who have abundance, will more be given. And from those who have no abundance, even what they have will be taken away. I call that reverse Robin Hood. Take it from the poor to give to the rich. Okay, this was during my 97 tour when I picketed the Bank of Canada and Buckingham Palace. But this is the Bank of, uh, Bank of England, sorry. Abolish interest rates. And banks are crooks. <laughs> You know, in our youth, we made bumper stickers and we could sell them for a buck a piece. And my brother once went out and sold 40 in a day. And that was in the early, mid-70s when that was a lot of money. 
Yes, which is inbuilt into the existing money system is a nightmare. And we're all working harder and harder and harder and harder and faster and faster trying to keep up with paying these billionaires to have another 15 palaces here, there, and everywhere. It's, a, it's an absurdity. Rothschild, Rockefeller, all the big money lenders, the millionaire, billionaire families who have their own plates and get the loan shark to us. They're not going to like it, but guess what? There's nothing we they can do because we can start our own little private lifeboats and get off their currency and say, screw you, we're on our own now. When we begin to look at the reality of it, we begin to see that the chances of getting the money away from that group of people are very, very slim. So you begin to see the necessity for developing something like Let's. It's not just a little peripheral, it's actually something which is central to creating some kind of balance and harmony in the world. The spirit of the institution is what determines how, how well it functions in terms of the way that hum, human beings relate to one another. You know, and if goodwill is at the heart, of that institution then it will function well and the relations will function well and it, it may serve and it hopefully will serve to foster positive right human relations and provided that that is at the heart of that organisation or that institution I don't think there's a problem you know mm -hmm. leaks out of it if you like to the directory as a listing of people willing to do things how much frame did you do lessons? Um, teaching kids and adults alike basics of, of, of pretty unusual musical instrument and it's uh, charging me my charging five, five, six beats an hour. It doesn't matter how good the form of the institution is, if it's not, if there isn't um, the right kind of quality or consciousness at its heart, then it won't work for the benefit of humanity. Okay, six beaks an hour is pretty well what I figured six pounds an hour was the rate in Britain when I visited. It was 60 green francs an hour in France and 20 green marks an hour in Germany a few years later. So, yeah, six beaks an hour is a reasonable number for, uh, is what I expected, not 15. It's not really about learning for seven and a half. sake. Six, seven it and it seems to be about learning to get a career, and a career is there to get money so that you can live. Um, so life is money in many ways, and uh, I think it's very sad. It's a bit sad commentary on humans. Isn't it? At end of 1994, 600 lets around. At end of 1995, 1,200 lets around. 2,500 at the end of 96. It's doubling yearly, exponentially, the world to fix. And what happened to stop well, the it? Well, LETS is helping to regenerate local community in a, in a variety of ways. One is that my background is in community development. And one of the um, concepts that you have in community development is that people are a solution. People are not a problem. And community development workers have a problem that, though that's part of their rules of play, if you want, they end up setting up projects like youth clubs or drop-in centres for people or whatever, and the individual still look to that community worker as being, that's the person that holds all the solutions to my problems. All these economic development strategies that have been imposed from outside, they, they haven't taken root, whether they're from government or business, because they're not actually listening to local people and working with their needs and what they're looking for. So, I mean, that's very much our approach, really. It's a sort of appropriate development, people's development approach. The uh, computer dot matrix printer, then, do I hear five? The computer dot, yeah, five over there, the dot matrix printer. Do I hear six? Do I hear six? No, solve the five pads, computer dot, brother dot matrix printer. I've got washing machines, it's a big donut. Can you imagine that? Isn't that nice? 
I didn't really realize how important a washing machine was to, to a mother with a kid in diapers. But if you think about it, without it, what's your only alternative, right? So I guess she had a right to have the glee in her voice. And it's the most memorable scene for me in this whole video, the glee of, I got a washing machine. By bringing in a local currency, what you then have is, is a way of people exchanging those goods and services without a central person telling them what to do and what not to do. And yes, you've got to come to me if you want a grant or no. You and that's called economic sovereignty. Want to borrow money from them. Within the Mets, everybody controls that themselves. And so that, that starts the start of people realizing they're part of the solution rather than being a problem. I think on a wider scale, it could make the community look at just what it had within itself that could be made more wider. It was big enough. Members. It ought to be that. Yeah. Because, you know, when you start to look at people you know, you realise just what a lot of experience and ability and dedication and, and imagination they've got. And you don't have to go out to a professional agency to, to do so many things. The only kind of quality control we have is on a very individual basis. We have an arbitrator who can legally give us advice or give people advice if they're unhappy with work. But it's the same as in the outside world. Okay, get that. Using this currency and how it's used has exactly the same problems and solutions as using the other currency in the outside world. Um, the only thing we can do is we can say, well, so-and-so has decorated so-and-so's house because we've seen the transaction, the transfer slip. And um, so we recommend you phone up that person. And he wasn't and happy. Ask what the job was like or ask if you can see the job. We run a self-furnishing business and we are also personal members of the Let's Scheme, so it seemed a good idea to try and bring it into the business aspect of it. So if people ask us, we do try and supply part of our services on Let's. Part! So if it was, for example, making curtains, we would probably charge about 50% for the material plus the amount we're going to have to pay for VAT, which is 17.5%, and then they could pay the rest on LETS. Yes. Where there are people Profit running margin on LETS. and they're part of LETS, um, they need to look at what their trading turnover is on LETS. And if it goes beyond their tax thresholds, then they need to start accounting for that, because the revenue want to know um, if they've gone above that threshold, they want they want some tax in sterling. Um, so they need to really ask for a certain proportion of that transaction in cash to cover any tax overheads. Money is money, all right. And what it means to me is I can pay the rent every week, pay the bills every week, and have a little bit left over for the bottle of vodka. It's long been an argument that uh, property falls into disrepair because of lack of funds, lack of money. Um, we're, we're standing in front of property that's owned by the church. It will not be renovated by the church because they don't have the money. Um, we're standing behind property that's owned by the post office. It won't be renovated by the post office because the post office say they haven't got the money. The argument is always about money. Lack of money. With Let's, we have the opportunity to be able to get property back into usage. We to, could. To save the uh, degradation of um, green areas and to, to stop urban sprawl by utilising buildings right in the town centre that are dying and decaying. By using Let's, we can get unemployed people working, we can get buildings back in usage um, and not becoming homes for pigeons. A mayor faces rising costs and shrinking revenues to study any proposition he would not refuse. So many think the job of being mayor is such a snap, but the decisions that I'm faced with are an ugly trap. With tools, materials, and trades that cover total range, yet one ingredient is lacking, money to exchange. <laughs>
during the late 17th century, um, there just wasn't enough regal currency around of the type that people, the ordinary people, needed to um, carry out their trading. There was a lot of gold and silver coins, um, but there wasn't really any copper coinage in uh, common circulation. And so um, the local people just found their own answer to this by producing their own tokens, which were valued at a farthing or a halfpenny, and um, they were just produced by local individuals. I, I'd like to see different kinds. Of like me running my casino chips, I could run lets for any group I want. I could probably have the tokens for a thousand people right in my house right now from my casino and from my other token experiments. That's essentially at the bottom um, as the sort of first line, which is about creating communities and about local economic development. Um, and, and then sort of like a sort of set of currencies like the layers of an onion, if you like, so you have appropriate currencies for, for different purposes. No, I don't want to search my wallet for different currencies for different purposes. I want my token to be usable universally. Sorry. That's Michael Linton's famous story. I remember hearing him say once he foresaw 100,000 currencies in London. Can you imagine searching for them in your wallet? position where currencies are divided in fact vertically by national boundaries towards a position where currencies are really divided horizontally so that there might be a European currency possibly eventually a world currency about that below that if you got a world currency what do you need any of the ones below as long as the first one works around the world, who needs the below ones? Currency, um, and below that, local currency. So, in such a world, let's would take its scenario, I'm sorry, let's would take its place in that set of um, currencies. Okay, this was just before I went to the United Nations and talked about the worldwide union of let's into a uni let's, okay? So they're still thinking small. I'm a firm believer in anarchy. I, I, I think an, an, in an anarchistic state is, is a beautiful state. And if you look at the definition of the word, it means a, an harmonious state of existence whereby governments are deemed unnecessary. And, and that is what I would like to aim for. And I think... Let's is definitely a step towards that. I know, but you still need referees, okay? Even in a fair game. Farnborough College of Technology, Robin Johansson. Okay. So, exciting times. And the question begs, what happened? How come they stopped? Who could have stopped them? How was it done? We'll find out someday.